This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, along with the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And you're listening to the Primetime Podcast here on Most Valuable Podcast. And you might be thinking to yourself, either if you're on Blog Talk Radio or listening on YouTube, whoa, guys, uh... You guys are coming out a day early with uh, the podcast this week, and that's because we've had some things going on. We're trying a new schedule, and it looks like this is going to be it as we are now recording the Primetime Podcast on Sunday nights instead of Monday nights. But we're going to be looking at some games for next week. But before we move on, Brandon, holy shit, did we have a good week five in college football. It was great. It was absolutely great. There were some great games. Didn't go exactly the way that I wanted them to go, but we had some really, really good games that went right down to the wire. It was good. Well, and I mean, the ones that you got to look at, of course, the Tennessee-Georgia game, the Florida State-North Carolina game, but (sighs) the one that's kind of in my craw and won't go away is it's got to be that Louisville-Clemson game, right? Ten touchdowns, right? That's what you were looking for. Ten touchdowns. Well, I said all ten were going to come from uh, Lamar Action Jackson. I wasn't wrong. I wasn't wrong. They just didn't all come from Lamar Jackson. I think it was something crazy like 10 touchdowns and 78 points was the uh, combined total. But, uh, God, why the fuck don't you? Um, why did you go out of bounds then? I don't know. Oh. Why he went out of bounds a yard shy of where he needed to be made no sense to I me. I don't get it. I got, up I, don't from get my, it. I got up from my chair and I yelled some awful profanities at the TV but it needed to be. It needed to happen. Otherwise, I, I would have had that in inside of me the the rest of the night, and that would have been no fun. And we uh, we were watching that as we were doing the live stream that me, Sean, and Dave did on Saturday. And I said it there. I'll say it now. Uh, I guess now my new favorite hipster team to root for is got to be Houston. I mean, Louisville has a chance. Clemson could lose too, but uh, Houston's becoming my new hipster team to uh, root for. So go Cougs and. Before we start all the topics we're talking about, we're going to look at Tennessee, Texas A&M. These vowels just won't go away. We're going to look at the Red River rivalry and kind of look at Texas and Charlie Strong. And then we're going to look at the Washington Huskies. Can they make a playoff run after they just demolished the Stanford McCaffreys this past week? But Brandon, Tennessee, Texas A&M, 9 versus 8. And like it says... uh, on YouTube, if you're watching it, these vowels just won't go the fuck away. They just won't lose. No, they certainly won't, and they're they're finding ways to win. They fumble the ball five times in a game. They find a way to win. They turn it over three times in a game. They find a way to win. They have the other team put up the the game ending hail mary mm-hmm. pass to win it. And then oh they do wait, it. then they come back and Josh Dobbs puts up his own hail mary pass, and they win it. How incredible this Tennessee team. They are. They are just finding ways to win. But I think that it's definitely a lot of talent for Tennessee. But at the same time, it's as a lot of golfers would say, I'd rather be lucky than good. And they've got a lot of luck on their side as well. I'm not taking anything away from them because they are talented and they are good. I think at the beginning of the season, the first couple of games, People looked at them and said, "Okay, well, this is kind of looking at the uh, like the Tennessee of last year. That just wouldn't that that wasn't as competitive as they could be. Mm-hmm. But I think that right now they've they've got that competitive edge in them for sure. And I think that that competitive spirit. But they've also paired that with Lady Luck and the two of those together. Oh, it's like peanut butter and jelly. Well, and I'm looking at this game, Texas A&M. They're another team that we looked at as." We thought they were going to be not bottom of the barrel, but not good enough. And we talked about Sumlin, Coach Sumlin, maybe being on the hot seat this year, maybe losing his job after this season. They're the number eight team coming in. So now Tennessee's got to go on the road playing this team. And we're talking about close games. They should have lost to Appalachian State. Virginia Tech, they started slow, but I will say they did play good in the end. So probably I'm not going to give them a loss there. They looked like shit against Ohio, although they won that game. They had to come back against Florida, and then the Hail Mary against Georgia. Those two kind of rhyme there. But really the big game with Appalachian, the Appalachian State game is the one where I think Tennessee should have at least one loss. 
thus far. And this is why, Tennessee fans, I'm going to speak to you. This is why you're probably like, Ricky, you're just ragging on this Tennessee team. You hate this Tennessee team. No, I just, like Brandon said, that golfers like to say, oh, I'd rather be lucky than good, or I like to have a little luck than be good. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I love when the good teams win. However, I know you're going to get luck every once in a while, but you know what's the best part about this Tennessee season? The best part for me, a guy who wants them to lose at least one, they're going to have to play Alabama twice this year. Once for sure, probably twice if they win their side of the SEC, which it looks like they could. So, I mean, that's two losses right there, right? Well, Ricky, of course it's two losses right there. It's the <laughs> Alabama Crimson Tide. Yeah, I, I think that Tennessee, I, I think that, you know, if, if Tennessee's able to play Alabama any way that Ole Miss was able to play Alabama, Tennessee could certainly have a chance to win. However, if they're not able to, if they're not able to get anything going and Alabama just runs away with it, then a lot of people are going to say this Tennessee team isn't for real because mm-hmm. that's that's the thing. And, 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 and as much as I love Alabama and am a huge Alabama fan, I think that sometimes it's it's a little blown out of purport, a little blown out of proportion. Okay, you lose to Alabama. Oh well, you're actually not really that good. No, just Alabama, Alabama just is really just they're good. on a level of their own. No one else is on that level right now, and I think that. That's, you know, we talked about it last week when we talked about Les Miles being fired. Mm-hmm. That's what ultimately did him in, being 0-5 against Alabama in the last five five times against them. I think that it's it was it was obviously that and how he ran his offense, but it, that's how people look at things. If you beat Alabama this year, who cares if you lost every other game? You beat Alabama. If you didn't beat Alabama... Then okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board and 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 see how to redo things because we need to beat Alabama. There are other teams on the schedule. There's other good games on the schedule. I, I think that that sometimes people look at that and go, "Hmm, lost to Bama, not as good as we thought, huh?" And and I think that that's one of the things where even if Tennessee were to lose to Alabama mm-hmm. when they play them. That's not to say that Tennessee isn't a good team. It's not to say that Tennessee isn't going to continue to still be good this season and possibly have a chance of going to the playoffs. Possibly. But I think that it's going Alabama right now, that's the biggest game on their schedule right now for Tennessee. And it's a game that they're definitely going to have to try and win. I mean, they, if, if they, they have if, to win. If, if I was going to say, if they want a legitimate chance of being considered for a playoff spot, at the end of the regular season this year, mm-hmm. they've got to beat Alabama. They've got to beat the Tide. And I think that, you know, are they built to be able to do it? Some people would say, no, they're not. Some no, people would say, no, think, they're not. I don't think they are. And some people would say that right now what Tennessee has been doing, they've been playing that bend but don't break style. And I wouldn't say style of offense or style of defense. They've been, they've been bending. They've been bending. But they've never broken because they haven't lost yet. But is the Alabama game the game where they could break? That's what the haters would say. Mm-hmm. But people on the other side would say, this Tennessee team has been really good. They've overcome adversity in each and every game. They've overcome the turnovers. They've overcome the fumbles. They've overcome the late the late Hail Mary pass that they thought was going to win the game for the other team. They've overcome all of that because they're a really good football team. People are going to see it one way or the other. I don't see it as Ben, ben don't break. And the reason why I don't see it that way is I think back, and for me, I know Tennessee fans, you're going to hate to hear me say it again. I think back to that Appalachian State game. That was not bending. That was basically letting a team that you should roll over beat you. And that's what I'm saying, beat you, because if their kicker could have hit a fucking field goal, hit an extra point, We wouldn't be having this discussion right now. And even on top of that, you needed a lucky play in overtime from your running back who picked up a fumble because your quarterback took a big hit to the chest and lost the ball because he's trying to reach for the goal line and be the hero. You needed that play. You needed the kicker on the other team. And I know what you're saying. Well, Ricky, you're talking about football. That is basically football. Sometimes the the field goal goes in. Sometimes it doesn't. But 
maybe I'm so angry about this season because it seems like every single game, it seems like to me it's luck, not skill. And to me, I like the ones where the team that is a little bit, if the teams are close in skill, then I have no problem with a little luck being in. But when the skill is off, like if it, it, if Tennessee gets a lucky play and luckily beats Alabama, oh, I, I'm not an Alabama fan, but that, that'll sit in my craw for years. Years, and I'm not even an Alabama fan. But the one thing I do want to say, these next two games for Tennessee, Texas A&M, and then Alabama, one on the road, one at home, they need to win one of these. They need to. Because if they lose both of these games... Guess who they put right back into the driver's seat? Florida. Because right now they are 2-0. and Florida's 2-1. and Basically, I look at the loss column. If you lose one of these games and then win out, you can win the East because you would own the tiebreaker over Florida. You lose both of these games, Florida's in the driver's seat. And who does Florida have to play? Vanderbilt, LSU, Missouri. Georgia's probably their toughest opponent. Well, Arkansas's their toughest. Pardon me. But Georgia's probably their only other toughest opponent. I do have to say, Florida beat Vanderbilt this past weekend. They only beat them by seven. 13 mm-hmm. to six was the final score. It was a defensive battle, mm-hmm. that's for sure. So, I mean, when you, when you take a look at, you know, right now for Tennessee, it's get the job done for you. You have to take care of your own business because guess what? This year, I feel like in college football has been a little, I shouldn't say that there's been a lot of parity, but there's been a lot of, Teams that have gone down when you're like, oh, I did not see that one coming. People are throwing that word out, though. We heard it all through the basketball season. Now we're starting to hear it through the football season. A little bit. A little bit. And I didn't, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I I don't use it as much for, for football, I feel like. Because use it for basketball all the time. All the time. But with football, it seems like your, your top 25 teams are usually the same top 25 teams throughout the season. They'll just switch spots mm-hmm. with each other. Some may fall out down towards the bottom, but they'll just switch spots. One could go to three, three could go to two, you know, five to seven, blah, blah, blah. And basically, that's not exactly how it's gone this season. Well, and a little like maybe my own personal rankings, I kind of feel like it is the same where it's like nine, one through 20 ish is all the same. If you're a team though at 20 and you lose, of course you're going to fall out. But I feel like the big thing is 21 through 25. For me, constantly in my own rankings for MVP, it is all five of those teams are new teams each and every week. Like there are like three to five teams always falling out of the rankings because they're losing just games that they should that we thought they would win, and there's huge upsets. Is Tennessee going to win both of these games? Probably not. If I were to Get put on my predictor hat. I'm gonna say if they're gonna win any of the next two, it's gonna be Texas A&M. But I really think if Tennessee loses these next two against Texas A&M, against Florida, they're gonna need some help. They're gonna need some help from the Razorbacks or Georgia to beat Florida, because then they're gonna put them right back in the driver's seat. And if they lose three games this year, they're done. They are done then either Florida or Georgia will take the side of the East. How do you see it playing out? Just with the next two, with Texas A&M and Alabama for Tennessee. Well, I, I think that this is going to be a a very interesting uh, two two weeks for Texas A&M because Texas A&M right now, they're going to be taking on Tennessee at home, and then after this game, they go on the road, the Aggies do, to Alabama. The only difference, though, is they got that bye week in the middle. Luckily, they got the bye week before Alabama. They do. Mm -hmm. They do have that bye week. But I I think that it's uh, it's it it, for the Aggies as well. It's also it's also big. Of course, you have two teams, Tennessee being on the east, the Aggies being on the better west Mm -hmm. side of the conference. But I, I think that. Again, for Tennessee, do they do they even come away from this week getting the victory? Because I think that a lot of people, I, I maybe I shouldn't say a lot of people. So many people talk Alabama, Alabama, Alabama from the West. Really, this season, no one's been talking a whole lot about the Texas A&M Aggies. They've hung right around 
the eight or nine spot for most of the season. And I feel like they've kind of flown under the radar. I mean, maybe they haven't, but I feel like they really have. I feel like Texas A&M and Arkansas have flown under the radar. At the beginning of the season, it was Alabama Old Miss. Alabama Old Miss. Chad Kelly thinks he's the best quarterback. Now it's mostly Alabama because of the kind of slowish start, I'll say, that Old Miss had losing their games. But definitely Texas A&M and Arkansas have, to me, kind of flown under the radar a little bit in the SEC. But this is where you guys come in. I want you guys to let us know down below. What do you think about this game? Val fans, tell me how much I'm wrong, how your team has skill, and that I should be rooting for you guys and not rooting for every other team that you play this season. And before we move on, Brandon, you you look like you got one more thing to say. I've got one more thing to say. I think that the matchup between Josh Dobbs, it's really not, they're, they're not going to match up against mm-hmm. each other, but it's going to be interesting to watch Josh Dobbs and Trevor Knight the leaders of both of these teams, Tennessee and A&M respectively. See how they do. Trevor Knight has been really good this season. Seven touchdowns compared to three interceptions. He's also been really good at running the football. Trevor Knight, 50 carries on the season, just a little under 400 yards and six touchdowns on the ground. He's combined for 13 total touchdowns. And I know that's not Lamar Jackson-esque because that's not as many as he's put Mm -hmm. up on the season. But Trevor Knight, look for him. He is also one of those quarterbacks who can beat you in a number of ways. Josh Dobbs is the exact same way. So it's going to be really fun and very exciting to watch both of those quarterbacks this weekend.